Hello, America. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to my review of Love After Lockup Season 2, Episode 1. I know I look horrible. My eyebrows look horrible. I don't really care. Um, this show has really... I thought nothing could be better than 90 Day Fiance, but I was fucking wrong, okay? Mm. Um, shout out to Honey. You just, I love you, girl. I do. I really do. I just, um, I ain't even got nothing to say. Like, I'm, I'm not, I got to go to work early in the morning, so I'm not really trying to drag this out, but... Bruh, I am absolutely shocked. Oh, Lord. I don't even know if this is real, because if this is real, this can't be real, okay? I got my notes, so here we go. Um, the first couple that we meet um, is Matt and Caitlin. Caitlin? Caitlin. Matt is 28. Caitlin is uh, 32. Um, he has... They've been together for five months, he was in jail for possess, possession and eluding and possession of a firearm. They met online on Craigslist. Uh, he was looking for a pen pal. Her friend was helping her pack. The girl got changed. Like, I'm not about to strip down in my Brian panties on television. Like. Oh, um, I am in a competition. I haven't put the link in a couple of videos because I'm just a horrible person. But I'll put the link in the description. If you want to vote for me, you do have to sign up. But you can vote daily. So let me, you know, go to California, live my best life, you know, do that. It is a sinking competition. The link will be in the description. If you want to vote for me, thank you. I really appreciate it. The dress that she put on was not cute. That's first. Um, her friend was like, bruh, are you sure that you want to, you know, like, marry him or, like, live with him? You sure that you don't want to, like, take it slow? She like, nah. Nobody has to get our relationship but us, okay? You don't have to get our relationship. And it really reminded me of, what's that girl name? Ashley from 90 Day Fiance. You better shut the hell up, girl, before she, uh, she treats you like Ashley did Natalie and kick your ass right on out her life, okay? At this point, you can't say nothing. If your friend come to you and say, hey, I'm marrying a convict, I'm proud of you, girl. I'm proud of you. Like, it's, mm-hmm, mm okay. So, I'm, I don't know if she has a job. Um, she didn't say that she had a job. She does live with her mother. Well, she lived with her mother. Her mother was like, I'm not comfortable with a convicted convict, a convicted convict uh, coming into my home. So, you know, I feel like you're making bad decisions. Since you are making bad decisions, you will have to hop up out of my home. What's her name? Caitlin then says, you know, her mother was on drugs. So she feels like she lost some of her childhood because of that. And she really wants her mother's support, but her mother isn't supporting her. So Jordan, her friend, is like, so where are you going to go since your mama is kicking you out? She was like... How dare my mom say that she's not comfortable? Like, where does she get off saying that? Let me tell you this. She gets off with the fact that that's her house. You live under her roof. Hey, I don't want you to bring a drug addict around here. Oh my gosh, mom. How dare you? Like, well, they don't know that. She don't know that he a drug addict. Um, a, uh, a, a, a felon. Okay. Let's just say felon for now, because nobody knows that he is a drug addict except for 
his mama. Or we don't know now yet that he's a drug addict. But we will surely find out. Okay, so Jordan is like, where y'all about to go? She says, well, I've been talking to his mother. And his mother is okay with us staying there. Jordan then asks, well, how would he, you know, how, how does he feel about this? Caitlin says, oh, well, he doesn't know, you know, he doesn't want to live with his mother, but that's something that we just have to do. So, you know, it's it looks like I have a bald spot, but I don't. OK, he doesn't know. He does not want to live with his mother, you know, but she says, you know. Tough. You know, tough luck. You, we don't have anywhere else to go. Your mother is very, um, you know, she wants us to come. And so that's what we're going to do. In the next scene, she goes to meet the mother. They both start to cry. It's been, oh my gosh, what the matter is that? I've been talking to you for so long and now I finally met you. Um, the mother showed them, showed her where she, they were going to sleep. And then she sat down and she was like, so what's up? Why are you sure that this is what you want to do? And she's like, I'm a hundred percent positive. And the mother's like, um, you don't think that maybe you want to, you know, live with him first or, you know, get to know him first before you take a big step such as marriage. And she goes on, I love him. I love him more than I've loved anyone ever. And I just, I'm going to be here for him. He hasn't given me any reason not to trust him. See, the thing about it is that he's in jail, okay? So, like, in jail, you can't. I'm going to trust you. Because you're in jail, like, you know, as far as cheating and stuff and everything else, like, oh, you might be talking to some other lady, but I know you're not doing anything else. But I mean, what's his name from uh, the, the first season of Love After Lockup? Um, the one with the beard, the white man with the side hair. He said that he, he cheated on Joanna with the damn lunch lady before he got out. So really, you can't trust these niggas. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. But she's all in. The mother is like, okay, you know, if you like it, I love it. He is a lot to handle. I will tell you that. Um, the mother and the father got divorced when he was 10. When that happened, he basically went in a downward spiral and then he got addicted to meth. Meth. This is his third time getting out of jail, the third time being released from prison. And the mother just doesn't want to see him relapse, okay? Speak of the devil he calls. She's like, hey, hon, guess where I am? Where are you? I'm in some really good company. Where are you at? I'm with your mom. That nigga said, what? What? Yeah, are you mad? I'm I'm pretty upset. <sighs> he didn't go zero to 100. He went about zero to, to 70, you know? Zero to 70 in about point, point 0.6 seconds. The mother then stepped out. The mother was like, in her confessional, he has a temper. He is quick to anger, and I just don't want him to relapse and run away, and I just want her to be prepared for this. That's all I gotta say. Um, I don't, I don't, am, am I? Um, because of her lying, he decided that he's not going to call her tonight. Uh, a good, a good night call. And she is very 
very sad and she's like no honey you have to call me he's like i'm not calling you you're a liar and that made her really sad but you can tell that she got family issues he got family issues they both got mental issues so i can I understand why they together and why she is clinging so tightly to this man because she didn't you know if her mother was on drugs she obviously didn't get what she needed from her parental source so, you know, it makes sense, but it's still, you know, a little bit crazy. Next we see Scott. We know who Scott is. He is from last season. He's with Lizzie. Um, Lizzie was supposed to get out last season, but she was caught with drugs and a cell phone. What was she caught with drugs? I think she, I think she was caught with drugs and a cell phone. I know she was caught with the cell phone. And they, she was facing uh, 12 more years, but she was able to only serve one year. So she should be getting out any day this season. So Scott is going to look at houses in Wisconsin because she is going to do her parole there. Um, now, I did just watch, like I was watching the little marathon of Love After Lockup. But I remember Scott saying that he spent $90,000 or over $90,000 on Lizzie and that he is now effectively in debt because of that. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is how, how, how do you have money to be looking at houses? So he sees this house. I think it's like a three bedroom, two bath. I don't know. It's a house. Okay. I know that it has three bedrooms. He's talking to the realtor. The man is showing him the house. They show the master bed, uh, bedroom was trash. Okay. It was trash, but that's neither here nor there, but it was trash. Like the master bedroom. I was like, what the fuck is this under the sea type shit? Anyway, I didn't get a good glimpse at it. So maybe it was just my own fault. Okay. Sorry. Um, he then tells the realtor that, She's been away for a while. She finally gets out. The re realtor is like, oh, she gets out. She's been in prison for 10 years. Why do you have to tell everybody that you meet? Hey, you know I'm engaged to a nigga that's been in prison. Hey, you know I'm engaged to a woman that's been in prison for 40 years. You don't have to say that all the time. You can you can make up a lie, okay? Um, The lady, what's her name? Angela, who's waiting on Tom... Tony or Tommy. If y'all watched last season, y'all know who I'm talking about. I cannot remember. I'll show a picture right then so you right here so you can know who I'm talking about. She was going to look at a venue. She told them that her husband that her fiance was just out of state right now. That's all you gotta say. I don't know why you have to go delve deep into this man and or this woman had been arrested. She had been in jail for 10 years. We ain't never seen each other, never had sex. You know, um, she's getting out. She was in jail because, you know, just all of this shit. Like, you you are giving away everything about this woman. And you don't, I don't, it's, it's quite dumb. It's really dumb. So the, the realtor is looking at him like, Okay. Okay. That's good for you. You know, you got you a little jailbird. Then obviously, you know, Lizzie calls, Lizzie calls. She's like, you're looking at a house. He's like, yes. She's like, well, you know that I have to approve and I have to sign off. No, you don't have to approve and sign off on anything. Uh, if I'm moving this because my back hurts, you don't have to sign off on anything, boo boo you're in jail. I don't understand. Like, I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but you can't tell a free person what to do. So, but she's like, because, you know, they need to have it on speakerphone for the, for the production and everything. And I get it. But I'm just like, can we take these conversations off of speakerphone? The realtor was standing there and he like, she like, well, maybe we should look at a four bedroom because, um, I mean, like, I just, 
you know, I, I kind of don't want to be intimate with you. The realtor walks out of the room as fast as he possibly can. He's like, I don't get paid enough or at all for this type of shit. She's like, I'm a godly woman now. When I was on drugs and stuff, you know, you could have me, but now I'm a godly woman, so I'm not doing it. Um, I just... I, I get it, but did she just start talking like this? Because... I don't know. I don't know. I don't have anything to say. Um, But she tells him that, you know, they... He, he should look at a four bedroom house with um a pool. So, yeah. In the next scene, Scott is going to meet Jasmine, Lizzie's daughter. Liz, uh, Jasmine, I just said that. Jasmine is 19. She hasn't seen her mother in 10 years. She has talked to Scott a couple of times, but obviously they've never met face to face. And so she's meeting him. Um, she is like, listen here, okay? I know you say you love my mama and all, but I don't know about that. You you trying to help her off her feet, but um, I don't think she needs your help to be helped. <laughs> she doesn't need your help to be helped. And he's like, well, you know, I'm just trying to get her started, get her a car, get, you know, basic stuff and then you know she can get a job and she can be more independent as she's able to be and she's like nah I hear what you're saying but she don't need to be you don't need to help her with that like you you good so no no sure sure tell me how much money you spent on my mama um over the three years about ninety thousand she said you said what you said ninety thousand mm mm he like, maybe she saved some of the money. She said, she ain't saved none of that damn money. Where do you think the money went to, Scott? Uh, well, um, you know, maybe it went to, uh, I'm pretty sure it went to drugs. She said, I know you ain't sit across from me and tell me, you know my mama was doing drugs and you fueled her addiction in prison. He said, what did that nigga say? Did I write down what he said? I ain't even write down what he said because he, he said some bullshit. He, she said, I want to have a relationship with my mother and I don't want you to get in the way. He's like, I realize that you're going to come first, but I'm not going to back away. The daughter says, and the daughter got that crazy look in her eye, just like her mama, okay? That's all I'm going to say. She, the daughter says, I don't want Scott around her. Obviously, Scott is not, you know, helping her. The relationship is fake. My mother's weakness is money. Money. She like the money. And since you got the money, what's she coming for? The money. She at your neck. But now it seems like you... I'm trying to figure out how this nigga about to sit up here and buy a house. I know he said he had a house in L.A. Where do you get $90,000 hmm, to give to a prisoner? Where, where... <sighs> Next we see uh, Michael and Megan. Michael is 26. Megan is... You know what? I'm going to leave that for last. Okay, I'm going to leave Michael and Megan for last. Next, we see Tracy and Clint. Tracy is 38. Clint is 37. Clint is an only child because his parents stopped after perfection. And he is um, an employee at a hotel that his ex-wife is the boss of. So his ex-wife is effectively his boss. He sits down with his ex-wife and he's like, hey, um, I don't ever request off, but I'm going to need two more days than, than the allotted time. 
And she like, why? And he like, well, you know, I met somebody. She like, I don't know. The scene was weird to me, man. She like, who you meet? He like, uh, you know, I met this girl. I love her. We getting married on Friday. She said, Friday? What you mean? Like, when? Friday. Coming up. That's in two days. What are you talking about? Well, I love her, you know. I don't know if he... Yeah, he did say, you know, she's in prison. We haven't met. They've been together for... She's been in prison for five years um, for violating a federal parole and also for drugs. I don't know how long they've been together. But they've never met because she got her phone privileges. She got her phone taken away and she also got her visitor, visitation privileges taken away. The wife is shocked. She's like... I just, she says in her confessional, I just want him to be happy. I don't want him to be taken for a loop. And I think, I think this is what he on right now. If y'all didn't know, this is a loop. Okay, he on a loop. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Um, He's really, really, he, I'm, I, it might be something wrong with him just because he seemed either he's really really naive or something wrong with him sorry but like seriously he goes to see his mother she they i guess own a spot the mother you can tell that that's where he gets it from because the mother is more like Okay, honey, well, we can go pick you up a tux. Are you sure that you don't want to live with her first? He's like, nah, I'm ready to get married. The father is in the back, you know, counting, you know, working the safe, doing his shit. <sighs> he comes in the back like, hey, dad, I just wanted to tell you, you know, I'm going to get my tux. Why? You know, I'm getting married in two days. Oh, my God. Gosh, nigga, you know how many episodes of Dr. Phil I watch? This is not going to work. Then the mother says, honey, you have to be optimistic. And that's exactly how I knew. He got all his optimism, op optimism from his mama and none of the common sense from his father. Because you cannot sit up here and tell me that this is optimism. This is not. This is pure craziness. It's... It's, but he is, I don't know, the jury is still out on him, but he's a, he's a little bit weird and I'm, I'm not gonna, um, that man said that somebody could say that she is a mass murderer and that wouldn't run him away. Bring up Ashley again. If Jesus himself came down and said that he cheated on me, I wouldn't leave him. Whew. Okay. Uh, last but not least, we see Michael, who is 26, and Megan, who is 28. <sighs> Megan is a virgin. She met, they've been together for about... A year and a half. Uh, they've been engaged for about eight months. They met through his cousin. His cousin uh, said that he wanted that his cousin was in jail and that he wanted to, you know, give the cousin her number so they could talk. Uh, they started talking off at friends, and then she felt a deep connection in her soul, and she knew that that was the one for. Um, for her she says that she you know she is a virgin she's saving herself for that passion and i really think that she is definitely a virgin because there is no passion in the first time that you have sex i don't i don't know who told her that but there is no passion there is no romance there is nothing with the first time that you have sex it's literally like okay we need to we need to do this. And honestly, 
Never mind. I ain't gonna say nothing. Anyway, um, the father comes over. The father is like, I don't really want you to go. She's like, you don't know me, Dad. You don't know him. He's a really nice guy. She naive as hell. She said she don't need to see him. She didn't talk to him on the phone. She know his soul. She know his heart. Did you hear me? She know his soul. She know his heart. Um, the father says, are you ready to deal with baby mama drama? And she's like, there won't be any baby mama drama. He loves me. The baby mama's not going to be anywhere involved in this. Now, while I was watching it, I didn't expect for the kafifi that took place just minutes later okay um oh my gosh why is she taking an online i don't know if it's a sex class a sex education class i don't know what it is for her to learn how to ride ride the peen She's very invested in sex. She really wants to have that sex. They go to the uh, sex shop in the next scene. She picks out, you know, she wants some lingerie. She's talking to her friends. She tells her friends that she's a virgin, which is weird because wouldn't your friends know that you're a virgin? Anyway, um, one of her friends suggests that she calls the baby mama, you know, just to see how everything is. She says, I'm not going to call her I'm not gonna talk to her you know that's my man (sighs) there is nothing between them you know he tells me everything that goes on with his baby mama um the daughter's name is Aviana she hasn't met the daughter yet but she is looking forward to meeting the daughter they then show Aviana the daughter And this white girl calling Aviana. Well, that white girl is Aviana's mother. I can't even remember the white girl's name. Aviana's mother has been with Michael for six years. I paused the TV because I said, what you mean has been with? That's, that's not, that, that, that's present tense. I've been with him for six years. So she says, we've been engaged. We we got engaged before he went in. I miss him and I'm ready to bring him home. I miss him and I'm ready to bring him home. Um... I didn't even write any of this down because I was shocked. Um, The shade of the producers, the cameramen, everybody who went out and filmed both of their parts and said nothing. Oh, are you excited to be engaged? Yeah. Tell the camera. You know what? 90 Day Fiance could never. And plus, they fit all of this into an hour. 90 Day Fiance could never give you an hour's worth of content. They got to drag that shit out all the way to Mississippi, okay? Okay. If it's an hour, if it's two hours of content, that means the fucking review is going to be an hour. Who got all that time to be talking a damn hour? Nobody. Damn, I'm sleepy already. I'm sorry. Look, this season is going to be everything and more. I thought Love After Lockup last year was crazy. It was. It was. But I ain't even got nothing to say. I'm shocked. I'm shocked that they let this foolery go down on television.
Uh, anyway, if you all like this review, please like, comment, and subscribe. I am very sleepy. Um, my name is Brielle. I make beats. I sing songs. If you like what you see, come on along. Bye.